does volatility affect the argument that Bitcoin is a great store of value? I don't really look at the price. I more look more at the hash rate and the hash rate over the past 10 years has been in a very predictable, solid bull market. And it just reached new all time highs recently. Mm -hmm. And that's really the nexus of the Bitcoin protocol. Price is uh, not really it's the least important data point on Bitcoin. The important data points are hash rate, halvings, difficulty adjustment, the emission schedule every 10 minutes. Those are important data points. Price is only reflects on the dollar because you're, when you're pricing Bitcoin in dollars, you're making a comment on the dollar, not Bitcoin. One Bitcoin equals one Bitcoin. That's never changed. But if you price it in dollars and you say, oh, you know, it, it's, it's a reflection on the volatility of the US dollar because unlike fiat money or gold, Bitcoin is free to trade. So it's trading and it's showing volatility in the dollars. So Bitcoin price down, it, it, we, we see dollar strength. Bitcoin price up, we see dollar weakness. Over the past 10 years, the US dollar is in a hyperinflationary collapse against Bitcoin, punctuated by the occasional strength in the dollar. So whenever the dollar might go up on any given day, and so priced in Bitcoin, you see the price down. But it does but that's just a reflection of the dollar. That's nothing to do with Bitcoin. The the Bitcoin's path is toward global Bitcoin adoption, hyper Bitcoinization. Market cap will be at a 10 trillion, 20 trillion, 30 trillion. And that path is set. It's not gonna, there's nothing that can derail it. And any given dollar price on any given day is the, not really important. Bitcoin is on a vector that it's on its own. It's a new asset class. It was the discovery of a new asset class back in the 2009 when it was first kind of dropped on, on the web. And um, the correlation or reverse correlation of the dollar, I, I think is the only thing really that is interesting because the US dollar is world reserve currency and Bitcoin is competing to become world reserve currency. So the king right right now is the US dollar and Bitcoin's attacking the king. So that's that's where those two come together. And sometimes that that's the end result is Bitcoin replaces the dollar and uh, replaces fiat money and replaces central banks. So that that's where it's going. And um, but it, it is when, on something that's compounding at a rate of 200 percent a year for 10 years. It's not correlated to anything. Right. You know, it's like there it's a, it's a it's a vertical rocket going straight up, you know, and it's going to pass some clouds on the way Then it'll pass a mountaintop. It'll pass a star. It'll pass get it'll escape the galaxy. It doesn't mean it's correlated to any of those things. It's on its own vector. You know, it's heading on a vector out of this of any as Michael Saylor would say, uh, all your models are broken. Right there, there are no models suitable to evaluate Bitcoin. I, I think it's absolutely true. You said that you know Bitcoin is attacking the king, being the United States dollar, but we all know that it's not the only one attacking the king. And, and you touched on central banks. We have central bank digital currencies being uh, developed worldwide, especially in China, who has unabashedly said, "Listen, we want." the dollar not to be the reserve currency and are probably best shot at that as a digital yuan. So how do you think that those play into this sort of 3D chess now instead of 2D chess of Bitcoin versus the dollar? Right. Well, the central bank digital currencies are just fiat money, cool. centralized fiat money. So they don't compete with Bitcoin. They compete with other fiat money, centralized fiat money. And uh, what happens is what will happen is that one major country will say, you know what, we're just going to add Bitcoin to our reserves. The same way MicroStrategy added Bitcoin to their balance sheet, one of the major countries, central banks of the world will say, we're going to start adding sure. Bitcoin. And then it'll make all these you know, central bank digital currencies look even worse than they already look. It'll make fiat money look worse than it already looks. And it'll make gold look worse than it already looks. So that's that that's there's there's no threat from from um central bank digital currency because it's just centralized fiat money it's not different than currently what we have now we have us dollars mostly electronic right there's very little actual yep. paper floating around it's all it's a central bank digital currency i invented a digital currency back in 1996 that i got a us patent on 5950176 and it's a virtual uh currency and it's a virtual trading system and it's also the virtual securities and it was the first patented commercial prediction market so i mean i know this whole industry very very well 
And um, I can tell you that a central bank digital currency is nothing, to, it has no, no problems, no threat to Bitcoin. It's worse. I mean, it's a central bank's wet dream, right? It's complete and utter control of the money supply. So, I, I mean, if anything, it should drive more people towards Bitcoin, I would believe. Well, there, it's going to be easier to do, let's say, MMT, Modern Monetary Theory, or UBI, right? So in, in the States, you already have basically UBI. People are getting a monthly check from the government, and they're not going to apply for jobs because they're getting twice the minimum wage by not working. So that's UBI. So we're already on UBI. So, okay, so now we know what, what happens when you do UBI. Oh, you get inflation. And uh, uh, so in other words, for every dollar increase you get in your UBI, you're going to have to pay more than a dollar for that basket of goods at the grocery store. So now you're losing again. You're going to lose and lose and lose. You cannot print your way into having a... Uh, prosperity. I mean, uh, if that were so, then Zimbabwe would be the richest country in the world or Venezuela would be incredibly rich, but they're not. They're incredibly poor because they think they can print money to create wealth. It doesn't work that way. Sorry. So let's assume that this hyperinflationary environment does come to pass in the next year or two. What can we do as people with a microphone in this market to make sure that as many people get and buy Bitcoin as possible before that happens? Right. Well, the, the sad news is that a lot of people simply won't buy it. And, you know, like the story of Noah and the Ark, they're, they're going to drown. But, you know, here's the thing. You know, when you're in an airplane and there's a, a sudden problem, they always tell you when the air mask drops, put it on your own face first. And then if you have kids or whatever, try to help your kids. So when, when this thing collapses, you know, you have to make sure they have enough Bitcoin. And then we may be in a position to help people without Bitcoin, but we're never going to be able to convince people without Bitcoin who don't want to be convinced to get Bitcoin before, before the problem. And so we shouldn't really worry about them. We should just worry about getting Bitcoin ourselves and getting as much Bitcoin as we possibly can. And then when it hits the fan, you know, then you're in a position to help somebody. But if you, if somebody doesn't want help, there's nothing you can do. It, it would be a waste of time in Bitcoin to get somebody should try to come to Bitcoin if they're not ready for it now and they never will be ready for it before the dollar goes into a huge collapse. So just keep stacking sats. And then when the thing blows up, you'll be in a position to help somebody. When corporate America really runs out of room to finagle and to escape the Bitcoin reality, you know, they've got to, they've got to make the move. They've got to make the move. So, um, I, I think it happens in 2021. So my price target for 20, 21 is still $220,000 per Bitcoin. Um, it's, it's an aggressive price target, but I, I think, think so. it's, it's based on US dollar running into severe trouble and institutions realizing that inflation is in fact not transitory. It's secular, it's structural, it's here for the long haul. And if you're not protecting yourself, you're gonna be wiped out. And as Paul Tudor Jones said about Bitcoin, it's the fastest horse in the race when he's talking, comparing it to gold, for example. And and so you get this wave, a, a tsunami of cash comes back into Bitcoin.